I'm going to give he you here a little introduction on how to use escape tools or escape tools for Genially. They are codes that you can add to your Genially presentation to add more functionality to, the, to them. And they are quite easy to use if you follow the instructions and the templates that we've provided. Everything we are presenting has been developed by a group of teachers from France who are making it available for free. Um, and we are just explaining and, and showing you how to use them. So um, be careful with the copyright because the team behind Scape have made them available for free, but not for resale. So anything that you produce with these tools, you can't uh, sell online and you need to share them with the same copyright as well. So the first thing you need to do is download this presentation by clicking the reuse button below. So scroll down a bit if you can't see it, go to reuse this Genially and it will then add it to your own presentations. You will need to have a Genially account, uh, but they are free and everything that we're showing in here can be used with a free account. In your presentations, you can then reuse the template. So you just go to add page when you're in your activity, your escape room or classroom activity, and you find the template. For now, I'm going to use this one and look out for the blue slides. They are going to be the template. So you can just add them to your presentation to, to use. So nearly all of the tools come in the form of little boxes like this or even smaller like this, uh, sometimes just single words or single numbers. So they can be quite small. And all you need to do is add them to your slide and group them with an object to make them work. So what the teachers from Scape have done is put probably quite a complicated code in somewhere, but you don't really need to worry about it because you can just use that handy little tool. So here, for example, all I need to do is add my picture or it could be a text, doesn't really matter. It can even be several pictures and I put it onto the code that I want to use and I draw a box around it while holding down the left button or you can click off the, on the two items you want to um, group while holding down the shift button and it will select both of them. And then you use the little group button at the top there or control G. Let's group them together. It comes up with this warning message. Yeah, we don't really need that. And now that is done. So now when I look at my presentation, my piggy is gone. And only if I go over it with my mouse, it appears because this is the tool for hiding things. You might have noticed there's also this box at the top. So don't delete this one. There will be a message on the template which parts you need to delete and which part you need to group. So sometimes you just need to keep them next to your slide um, kind of as a background uh, code going on there. So make sure you don't delete the wrong bit. Uh, very often the codes can also be duplicated. So in this case, if I wanted to hide lots of piggies on my page, I can just uh, take this and control C and then control V to insert it. And then I've got another one and another one. And I can group each one with a different object if I want, or I can have lots of picks. Let's have a laptop as well. And maybe another pick. Um, so it will now, the same tool will work with all of them. It doesn't work with all tools. Some of them can only be used for one item. Um, but it will always say on the page if you can't uh, duplicate it. Then in this case, it's kind of easy because the these boxes with the codes are invisible when you look at the page, but sometimes they aren't. So if you go to the next example here, um, a more complicated one. So we've got these words and when I look at my page, well, the effect I have is they flip everything around and we can still see them, but we might not really want to do that. We might want to hide them. So 
what you do in that case is you just take the code that you don't want to see and you go up here to transparency and go to zero it's still there but invisible and now we just do a box again and group it and I don't have a problem another thing is you can't resize these tiny little codes and sometimes they're a bit fiddly and hard to see um, but what you can do is you can just make the area around it a bit bigger and that makes it much easier to handle them to move them around and so on but be aware that sometimes that changes the area that reacts so if it's a task for example where you have to click on an item this window will determine the area you have to click in so if you make it really tiny the area is much harder to find and to click on while if you're making it bigger if you ever make something invisible like this and you can't find it anymore that's a good trick because if you look at the preview of the slide over here you can see it's still quite a big gray box on there so you can still see it on the overview even though it's transparent on the actual slide so that's uh, an easy way of finding your lost your lost code again another way of making things invisible um, especially if you have quite big pictures is just simply have it behind the picture so in this case here we just make sure the pic is in front so if you go to layer put it in the top layer and now the pick is in front I can just draw a little line here and this way oh it's still in selected the text let's get rid of the text so this way it should only select the pick and the code and we can group it so with some tools you can only use one of the options that is on there so in this example uh, in flip so it flips the text uh, to the left to the right or upside down but it can only do one of these at a time so i need to make sure that i delete all the other ones that i don't want otherwise they can interfere with each other um, so in that case it's not enough to just move it out of the slide you need to completely delete it for it to work um, for some for some of the tools you will need to insert some code and for that you go to insert over here make sure that others is con um, selected here then you paste in whatever code is on the template and don't forget to click insert and that will normally insert a very small text or a small number onto your page which again you can then hide by making it invisible um, and or group with an object 